our next to last type of reaction that we're going to talk about for this chapter are called precipitation reactions. Okay, and they are double displacement reactions, which is nothing special, and they're driven by what we call solubility rules. Okay, and before we continue on, I want to um, introduce you to a new-ish type of notation. So in chemical reactions, we have our various elements and our chemicals, and what we're going to start doing is right after each um, component in the reaction, we're going to have states of matter. And we're going to be able to show those in our chemical reaction equation. So if I have a an S, that's for a solid. If I have an L, that's a liquid. If I have a G, it's a gas. And the last one, and it's very important for this section, if I have an AQ, that means aqueous. Okay, and aqueous things are dissolved in water. Kind of running out of room here. Okay, and we're going to be doing a lot of aqueous things, uh, dealing with aqueous components. And those are ionic compounds that are dissolved in water. So they have come apart in water. Um, so looking at our example here, and it's our, our dance partners in the red and blue again, and double displacement reaction. So my potassium is going to trade and become partners with the nitrate, and my silver is gonna trade and become partners with the chlorine, okay? Very simply, we're going to decide how those things go together correctly, and then we'll balance the equation afterwards. Okay, and we'll get to doing some of that here in a little bit. But right now we want to get into how do we decide whether something is soluble or insoluble. So something that is soluble is AQ. Okay, that means soluble, something comes apart in water. Okay, insoluble things we're going to denote with an S. Okay, something that does not dissolve will remain solid. Okay, so looking at this table, and you'll be provided with this information on the test, so don't worry about trying to memorize this table. On the top, so it's divided into two sections, top and bottom, and on the top section are things that are usually soluble. And then as we look to the right in that same section, we have exceptions to that. Okay, so if it's something over here, it will be soluble except when it's something with over here, okay? And then the bottom part of the table are things that are usually insoluble with exceptions, okay? So if it's something here, it'll be insoluble. If it's with something over here, it'll be soluble, okay? So let's uh, see if we can answer the question that's been posed to us here and see. start talking about how to use this table. So is iron chloride soluble or insoluble? Okay, so I'm gonna look for the components, the two different parts, the iron and the chlorine. So let's see, on the top left, we see this part right down here with the halides. Okay, so anything with a chlorine minus will be soluble except with silver, mercury, or lead. So iron is not one of those um, exceptions. So iron with chlorine will be soluble. Okay, so this one, so the iron with the chlorine will get the AQ because it's soluble. If it's soluble, it comes apart in water. If it dissolves in water, it's aqueous. So that's why we say AQ. Let's take a look at our next example soluble or insoluble. So let's find the components. There's calcium and hydroxide. And I'll search and I'll search and I'll search and way down here at the very, very bottom, there's my hydroxide. All right, so things that are with hydroxide are usually insoluble, 
right? Remember the bottom part of this table are things that are usually insoluble unless it's with barium, okay? Or alkali metals, right? And alkali metals are the lithium, sodium, potassium, those guys, okay? So if it's not one of them and it's not barium, calcium hydroxide will be insoluble so we give it an S. Okay, insoluble things do not dissolve. So they stay solid, or they make a solid. All right, how about sodium phosphate? All right, and I'll give you a, a hint to make this an easy search. Right here, alkali metals, anything, anything with sodium is soluble with no exceptions, okay? So sodium, lithium, potassium, all those guys, if you see that as one of the components, it is automatically soluble. All right, how about ammonium carbonate? Well, let's take a look. So ammonium and carbonate, how do those things go together and how do they, uh, go with the rules, right? So down here at the bottom, we have carbonates are usually insoluble, except with ammonium, right? So carbonates are usually insoluble, except with ammonium. So that means that this one will be soluble and get the AQ. Right. How about barium carbonate? All right. So down here we have a carbonate. All right. So I'm looking for how does barium fit with carbonate? All right. Carbonates are usually insoluble, with the exceptions being the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium. So since it's insoluble and has does not fit the exception, that means that this thing will be insoluble and get the S, right? Because insoluble things don't dissolve, they make solids, right? That's why it gets an S. And to be clear, we also call this the precipitate. Okay, when you have an, uh, a solution of liquids and something makes a solid, it precipitates out. It will settle down to the bottom, okay? So the solid thing is also called the precipitate. Right. How about silver chloride? All right, here we have our chloride, right? our halides, are soluble except with silver. All right, so this will be insoluble, gets the S, and we call it the precipitate. I'm pretty sure we got all of those correct. All right, so here's our next task. So magnesium chloride dissolves in water. So write a molecular equation and an ionic equation to show this process. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to skip ahead because <laughs> Dr. Lyon's lazy. Okay, so the idea here is that we take something that normally in air is a solid, right? Magnesium chloride, is it kind of looks like table salt, right? And when we dissolve it, we make it AQ. If it dissolves, it becomes aqueous, right? So when we show the ionic part of that, we're showing how does this solid come apart into its two ions in solution. Okay, so these two things being aqueous, these are dissolved ions. Okay, let's identify the precipitate that will form from the following reactions. So these are double displacement reactions, so we have two ionic things that are aqueous, 
right? So what we're going to do is uh, when we have ionic things that are aqueous, we're going to do a double displacement. So my sodium goes with chlorine and my barium goes with the carbonate. So for now, I'm not, I'm going to ignore this precipitate other thing because I just want to write over here on the right hand side. So how do we decide what the formulas are? So it's very much like when you went, when you did the nomenclature stuff and you went from name to formula. Remember I showed how you write the two ions and then you decided how they go, go together correctly. So that's what we're going to do here as well. So I'm going to start with the sodium and the chlorine. So I have sodium ion is an Na plus and chlorine ion, which is a one minus. So they just go together as NaCl. My other set of ions, how does a barium ion go with a carbonate ion? So barium makes a two plus and carbonate makes a two minus. So they just go together as BaCO3. Okay, so now the question is, which one, if either of them, will form a precipitate? Which one will be insoluble? Which one will make a solid? Okay, all those things are the same. All right, so NaCl, remember anything, anything with an alkali metal is always soluble. Okay, so NaCl will be aqueous. All right, and then barium carbonate um, so our table here is kind of lacking, so I'm going to come back up to a better table. Here we go. So we're looking for barium and carbonate. So here's our carbonate. Carbonate's going to be insoluble unless it's with an alkali metal or ammonium. Barium is neither of those things. So barium carbonate, let's come back down here. Barium carbonate will be solid, which makes it the precipitate. All right, let's take a look at our, our next example. I'm going to erase all this stuff, and we'll start with the second equation. So we're looking at B here, all right? So two ionic things that are aqueous. So I'm going to do double displacement. So I'm going to take my ammonium with the chlorine and aluminum with the sulfur. Right, so how does the ammonium ion correctly fit together with a chlorine ion? So NH4 plus and Cl minus. And they just go together one to one. So NH4 Cl. Now our other one is aluminum and sulfur. So how does an aluminum ion go together with a sulfur ion? And here we'll do our crisscross to make it easy on ourselves. So the formula is Al2S3. All right, so anything with an ammonium ion Right, that's right here in those rules. Anything with an ammonium ion is always soluble. So ammonium is going to be AQ. And then sulfides is going to fit here under this most other ions <laughs> as not soluble. So it gets an S. Okay, so let's take a look at our third reaction. Right here, so two ionic aqueous things, so they're going to do double displacement. So silver is going to go with the chlorine, magnesium is going to go with the nitrate. So silver makes a one plus, chlorine makes a one minus, so they just go together AgCl. And then magnesium makes a two plus. And nitrate makes a one minus. So I need two nitrates, Mg, NO3, two. All right, so let's take a look. Our halides, 
So chlorine fits into this category right here. Okay, so these this is in the part of the table where it's usually um, soluble, except with silver. All right, so silver and chlorine together make a solid, insoluble. And then magnesium with nitrate, Mag nitrate's right here in the third line of that table. And anything with nitrate is always soluble. No exceptions. Okay, so our precipitates were the barium carbonate, the aluminum sulfide, and the silver chloride. We're going to go ahead and stop this video right here, and we'll pick it up right here with our next video.